Well, hello, Christ United Methodist Church, friends and family. It's Pastor Jeremiah coming to you at this week's Upper Room Devotional. And this one's titled Pause and Consider. And this is something I think all of us can learn something from, just in the title alone, to learn how to take a pause and to think. I can't tell you how many times in my life I have wished that I had taken time to pause before I started running my mouth. <laughs> I'm sure I'm not alone on that one on any level. Sometimes we just start talking and spewing out our frustration or our anger. Sometimes we just lose our ability to pause or to think and collect ourselves. And then all of a sudden we have all kinds of things we said that we wish we could take back. And, you know, there's something funny about the words that we speak or the actions that we take. Once they're done, they can never be truly taken back. We might be able to walk them back a little bit, make restitution or apologize or do any number of things to help it so that we can minimize or at least mitigate the damage that we've done already. But the damage is done. There's nothing you can do. It reminds me of a story I heard uh, about a, a person who went in to make confession. Uh, they had made, they had went in and sat in the confessional and they were talking to the priest and the guy said, Father, forgive me for I have sinned. And you know, what have you done? And the story eventually comes in that he had told stories about somebody, lied about somebody and it had really impacted his friendship and this person's reputation in the community and he was trying to seek forgiveness and the father in this story does something very interesting he goes i want you to go home take a pillowcase cut it open and dump all the feathers out and then come back to me and so the person does this he goes and he cuts the pillowcase open the feathers that's a feather pillow the feathers go scattering all over the the city out the window that they're dumped he returns back to the priest and says Hey, Father, I've, I've done what you've asked me to do. And the father looks at the person and says, all right, if you want forgiveness, go get all the feathers. And your impossible task. The point of that story isn't about feathers and fetching them. It's about you can't take back what's been done. You can't put the feathers back in the pillowcase. The damage is out there and you can't really make restitution. You can only seek to try to move forward towards rebuilding or reestablishing or doing what's possible to, to make relationships right again. It, it's an interesting thought and something that I think we should all consider deeply, looking at myself in the mirror first, making sure that we take a pause and consider. But also our author, Jennifer Kingley from Alabama, encourages us to look at several other areas around pause and consider. In this story, uh, Jennifer is recommending that we keep track of those people who come into our life who are good examples. And when we look closer at the devotion, you'll see why. And it started making me think about people who have been good examples for me. And I've got a list a mile long of people who have been inspirational to me on how to behave differently, to, to respond to situations that are difficult um, with better uh, skill, <laughs> better patience, uh, better compassion and empathy by my watching them handle situations that I didn't do deal well with much better than myself. I look for that and I think a church family or our family themselves, people who can hold us accountable for being our best self are people that are, are a blessing in our lives and being willing to take the time and pause and consider and look at those people who can inspire us to do better and to make sure that we walk with people through this journey called life who can be accountability partners, people who can push us and prod us and nudge us into being better than we are in any good, better, any given moment, which is why it's so important that we hang out with people who can speak into our lives and to be around people who encourage us to be better people, which is why I think our the friends, the measure of who we are sometimes can come down to our friends group or who we're hanging out with or our church family or the family that we have, making sure that we're cautious about who we allow to influence our lives and actually even more than cautious, intentional about finding people who can inspire us to be better than we are. And then asking ourselves if we are that for somebody else. Are we 
people who are living in such ways that people will look at us and say, I wish I could be more like that. Are we those who pause and consider? Jennifer also has us look at 2 Timothy chapter 3. All scripture is God-breathed and useful for teaching, correcting, and training in righteousness. She looks at that scripture because of her situation where she had to find a way to maybe keep her mouth shut or retract some angry statements and find a way to forgive when rightfully so she had reason to or cause to be upset. I had a friend with her that helped her take a deep breath, to pause and consider. And so the act of studying scripture and the act of studying devotion such as this, even, the, even that act, which is what precipitated this devotion is doing this devotional booklet. Um, the act of seeking God's will and, and working with others and pushing yourself to be more deeply led by the spirit and informed by God's word through devotions and scripture reading and scripture study and Bible studies and your own personal reading. Each of these things can help give us that inner fortitude to be able to pause and consider before we take actions. Who are we and whose are we? And do does that fact that we are God's and that's who we belong to is him. We belong to God. That's who we are. That's an identity statement and whose we are, a, a statement of impact in our lives. It's all about us being disciples called by God. Like, well, if that's who we are and whose we are, are we reflecting that in every given way? And we may fall short. I know I do at times. In fact, kind of a thing to look at all around that perspective of taking on the name of God and then going into the world and behaving in any way outside of what might be considered a godly response is the very definition of taking the Lord's name in vain. It's not about words you say, you know, the, the gosh darn it phrase. Um, or anything like that that's taking the Lord's name in vain. That's a bad way, perhaps, of interpreting what's being said there. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. May more likely, and I believe more than may, it means specifically that if you're going to take God's name upon you, don't go do that lightly. Don't take God's name upon you. Claim to be God's children or God's child or divine son or daughter and then go out in the world and act in a way that's out of order with that. Don't take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. Don't take it upon you. That's a very different way of looking at that and something I think that's about the accountability that each one of us has to have when we're thinking about do we take the Lord's name as our own. And don't do that. Don't take that lightly. Let's look a little closer at Jennifer's um, devotional today. A friend was visiting and we read the upper room together. The passage that day was the parable of the unmerciful servant. And the prayer focus was someone I need to forgive. We talked about the devotion, but I did not think much about it. Later that day, we were shopping together when I received a rude message that made me angry. As I was fuming and complaining to my friend, she gently reminded me of what we had read that morning. She urged me to see the other person's side and to let go of my anger and my need to be right. I realized that it is easy to get angry, but my anger does not bring about the righteousness God desires. God gave me the exact words and company I needed that day, even before I knew it. Sometimes it's easier to get carried away by our feelings than to pause and consider what God is saying about our situation. We have to make a conscious choice to step back, see the situation in light of God's word. I hope the next time God speaks to me, I will pause and listen. You know, there's several layers to what she has said there. First of all, that layer of being in relationship with people who work with you and study with you, do devotions with you and challenge you and walk through life with you. That's an important part of our disciples journey and an important part of yours and mine to find ways to have people who walk with us on that journey, but also finding ways to apply what we do, to apply a devotional that you're listening to now and perhaps putting it into play in your life with some intentionality or to apply a scripture verse or a scripture study to not just do these things out of some sort of holy practice, but instead to do them so that they inform us change us from the inside out and prepare us to go into the world to be more like Christ, 
to be those who take the Lord's name upon us and do so in a way that means that we take that seriously rather than taking it in vain, right? Like these things are important parts and this is what Jennifer is really wrestling with and being grateful for the people who can inspire her and challenge her to continue to move in the path that she has taken. She was urged by, that's the, inv the invitation I think that each of us needs to hear for ourselves, not only to be willing to be urged by, but to be those who urge others to take a, uh, take a class, so to speak, from Jennifer's friend who spoke up rather than just stepping back, urging others to be more godlike, urging others to take a pause, to take a, take a step back, urging others by our actions and maybe even the words we say. Sometimes we are all too polite in society and just say nothing and let something go by that we should have said something about. And given that we take God's name upon us, that we are Christ way followers, we ought to be willing to speak up, say something. Um, it's an important part of this journey. And then figuring out how to do that with tact, like I'm not gonna say that you should just jump into any type of conversation, do so with a little bit of wisdom. Um, and maybe you need to pause and consider how you'll speak truth in love before you do speak up. Also, there's the layer of forgiveness here, which I will remind each of us. Forgiveness does not mean that we are restoring or reconciling or making relationship with somebody that we've forgiven. So often I sit with people in my office who feel terrible about themselves because they wonder if they've truly forgiven somebody, even though they don't want to be in relationship with them anymore. And that is not the call to forgiveness. I will remind you that the call to forgiveness is to no longer wish them ill will or harm, to not wish them any type of cursing or to want them to be out of right relationship with God, to say, I am not the judge, God is the judge. And I forgive what has happened to me. I'm no longer holding it against this person. But we also have to exercise wisdom and whether we will be in relationship with somebody. We all have those people that we've had to forgive over and over and, and it becomes this repeating pattern of people insulting or hurting or crossing boundaries or sometimes somebody's done something so terrible that as much as we need to forgive and let go and turn it over to God, we would be foolish to engage in further relationship with this person who has wronged us or hurt somebody we know. On some levels, forgiveness isn't something that we accomplish by becoming best friends with somebody. In fact, forgiveness is just something saying, I'm not the judge of this, I turn it over to God. Reconciliation and restoration are different than forgiveness. Now, I think some people get it twisted in their head because you hear in scripture, God remembers our sins no more because we're forgiven. Well, you're not God and neither am I. We are not called to be God and forgive the way God does. We are called to be those who are seeking to be on a Christ's way journey to do the best we can in this life. And that because of what God has done in and through the person of Christ for each of us, he is able to remember our sin no more. At some point, we can settle out the differences at some eternal instant in the future and where we're all in some better place with God as the head. And maybe we can find ways to be in rest restored relationship then with those, but there are people on this earth that are in this in the realm of our lives that it's best we just don't continue to engage with them. That doesn't mean we can't sit in the same church. That doesn't mean we can't sit on a similar committee. It doesn't mean that we can't work with, and that doesn't mean that that person doesn't know that if they're hungry and need a food or need help, that they can still knock on your door. Forgiveness invites us into being what we can to help and love our neighbor, but that doesn't necessarily always mean I forgive and I forget. That's not the same thing. You can forgive and go forward, but it doesn't mean you're in restored, reconciled relationship. That takes time, work, and effort. It may not be a possibility, nor should it be in some very specific cases. I won't belabor that anymore, but let yourself off the hook a little bit. Did I forgive? Well, have you turned it over to God and do you no longer wish that person ill will? If the answer to that is yes, then you got some other things to struggle with, perhaps how you will move forward, but you have forgiven. That's what we're called to do. So how do we walk with people who help us to pause and to consider, to keep our words in our mouths sometimes rather than to spew them out, to control our anger, to take a step back, to read and study devotionals and scripture 
and be with others who encourage us on that journey. These are all parts of that process. It's a very complex interwoven web of interconnectedness that we have with those who can help us and with reading and scripture and study and our disciples journey. I invite you to pause and consider how you can put all of these things into play to be those who walk with others, who encourage you. How are you going to encourage others and urge them on? How will you put practices into your life like studying a devotional or studying scripture or attending a Bible study or going to church or doing any number of ways, uh, things that you can to encourage you and equip you to be able to pause and consider? Most importantly, how do you become somebody who lives out forgiveness, lets things go, turns it over to God and trusts something larger than yourself. Very difficult topics to analyze today and to live with. And I encourage you to continue to wrestle with these things, not just today, but throughout your lifetime. We always need to struggle with the simple basics of being Christ's way followers. I leave that with you in Christ's name today. Amen. So our prayer focus today is to, a, to focus on a friend who's been an example who has encouraged me. And so I want you to draw that person to your mind. Think about that person and thank God for that person. I hope I'm that person for some people. I hope you are as well and that you can think of how you're that person somebody else may be grateful for. But for you, who are you thankful for? Lift that name up to God and maybe pick up the phone and tell them or send them a message and say thank you for your example. That's an encouragement and a way to urge them on as well. With that, let's pray. Heavenly Father, help us to listen to your promptings through your word and in those around us. When we face obstacles, help us to trust you. May all those who hear my voice know that you are the with us God who goes before us, prepares a way like in this devotional where you had them reading a devotional on forgiveness so that later they'd be ready to forgive. Help us to see how you are always moving in and through and throughout our lives. Help us to be those who forgive, who urge and encourage others, and who are open to being urged and encouraged. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Great to be with you. See you next week.